Hey guys, welcome to the Dimensions of Woodworks workshop. Today we're going to be going over how to build this style of cornhole board. I developed this design about three years ago and it's very reminiscent of an old set of backgammon boards. One major factor that distinguishes my cornhole boards from the rest, finger joints. So typically the first thing that I like to do with projects that involve dimensional lumber is to go ahead and just push them through the planer and that helps to clean them up just a little bit. Then I go ahead and cut all my boards to length just to get them ready to get finger jointed. I usually like to apply a good coat of wax to the tabletop of my table saw so that the sled slides easily. Then I begin the process of breaking my plywood down into a little bit more manageable size. I then take it to the table saw and cut it to its final dimensions. This project is unique in that we stain it before we glue it together. I try to pay special attention to the inside of those fingers and make sure there's no wet stain still there that will not let the glue set properly. So I tried a new technique on this set of cornhole boards. I used wood glue for the more permanent solution, but I also used CA glue for that quick fix. It's very important that you maintain square, and this glue setting quickly allowed me to do that. I also put tape around the joints, because in the past the wood glue squeeze out has been really hard to clean up in the fingers. Then on the legs, I made two marks. One is where the hole is to be drilled to attach the legs to the boards, and the other is my pivot point for my compass so that I can get that nice round over at the top of the leg. Then I took the legs to the drill press and drilled those holes out. I also took them over to the bandsaw and cut that arch at the top of the leg away. This small arch at the top of the leg is what allows you to flip them underneath the set of cornhole boards. If it was square at the top, you wouldn't be able to fold them under. Then it's everyone's favorite part of every build. Sanding and more sanding. I gotta say this little tape trick worked out pretty good. Now it's time to find that center point of the hole in the middle of the board. I mark down from the top and then out from there to be able to set my compass and draw a perfect circle. Now, using a spade bit, I'm able to give myself a hole for my jigsaw blade to go into. Then I try to take my time and cut that circle as accurately as possible. After a little bit of sanding, now it's time for a small roundover bit. I'll just run that around the edges of the circle and then sand again. Now it's time to establish our lines for our stain, since we want a color on one side of the wood and not the other, we have to have something to block that. Although stain is really bad about seeping under tape lines, it's not a big deal in this case because the area that's under the tape is going to be painted white. Now it's just a basic staining process. I try to make sure that I'm very careful around the edges of that tape line and when I wipe off the excess stain to not get any of that color on the unfinished wood. I've found it's easier, while the tape is still down from the initial separation, to use that as a guide to lay the next set of tape against it. When I remove the tape in the middle, that is what will be our white strip leading up to the hole. And now, just like with the stain, we want to be really careful with that white paint so that it doesn't enter any areas that we don't want it on. So now that we've got the sides and the tops of our cornhole board stained and painted, it's time to attach the two. I run a bead of wood glue around the perimeter of the cornhole board, then I use clamps to keep it from sliding around. I'll use a 23 gauge pen nailer just to tack them into place until the glue dries. 
Now it's time to find the appropriate angle for the leg. You can find this angle on some sites, but it's typically best to just do what I've done here and raise it up 12 inches from the platform, let it hang over the edge of your workbench and mark it. Now I'm gonna run a small one by two between two legs so you can grab them at one point and pull them both out at once. So before anybody says anything, I realize this isn't the safest way to make this cut. I've built a crosscut sled for my table saw, but it was for my old table saw and I hadn't built one for this one yet. If you have a crosscut sled, I definitely recommend using it for this process. Now that the construction is done, we can go ahead and stain our boards the appropriate color so that we can go ahead and get them ready to glue up. Just like every other joint in this build, you wanna take time and take care to make sure you don't end up with a lot of squeeze out after this process and just a bunch of mess that you have to try to clean up. So just like the other attachment, I let the wood glue do the heavy lifting and just use clamps and brad nails to hold it till the glue dries. I also bought carriage bolts that were a bit too long, so if you buy the correct size bolts, <laughs> you can skip this process. Now it's time to pull our painter's tape away and reveal those nice, clean, crisp lines. Look at that, it looks pretty good. Now we're gonna get ready to take it outside and spray it with several coats of spar urethane to give it just a little bit of protection from the elements. I definitely recommend using the spar urethane or spar varnish for any projects that may end up with moisture on them and especially if they're made from plywood. Now that everything is painted, stained, and cleared, it's time for the final assembly. Not much left. All you have to do is put the carriage bolts back in, put a washer on the inside and the nut, and tighten it up, and it's ready to go. This set of boards was actually built for the gentleman that sold my joiner to me. So hopefully he gets as much use out of these boards with him and his family as I have out of that joiner. Thanks, Eric.